Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? Welcome to Caribbean Perspective. So glad you can join us. The story that takes the lead in today's edition for Wednesday, 8th May 2024, and brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Prime Minister of St. Lucia dismisses reports of him being hurried away by the FBI as fake news. Details after this important message. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. St. Lucia's Prime Minister Philip J. Pei is calling on mainstream media to step up and stop the spread of misinformation. The challenge follows recent allegations of three prominent figures, including the Prime Minister, being escorted onto a jet by the FBI. Miriam Montoud of the DBS News World reports. The media should call out that level of destruction that people are bringing onto their own country. That was Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre's response to allegations that he was escorted onto a jet marked FBI late last week. This rumor started after a caller to a local radio show claimed to have seen three prominent figures being escorted onto the aircraft at the George F. L. Charles Airport. Since then, it has been speculated that this was done due to the island CIP program. However, the Prime Minister has dispelled this claim and labelled it a dangerous ploy by opposition surrogates. Criticism is good. Criticism is necessary. We accept criticism. We have in, in our cabinet, we have discussions when members do not agree with certain things that become the compromise. But for a, a, a party that was established by Sir John Compton to deliberately get involved, to sully the name of the country, and the name of the Prime Minister is dangerous. Yes, it's very dangerous. I didn't want to speak about it, but, but you brought it up, so I'm going to say it's dangerous. He is calling on mainstream media to be responsible when it comes to the veracity of the information they share and to guard against being unsuspecting allies in the spread of misinformation. I never want to tell the media what to do. Never. That's not my style. That's why you never heard me treat the media how you always treated before. That's not my style. But I'm saying... These things should, mainstream media should not be encouraging that level of misinformation. This is crazy. The Prime Minister's comments were made during Monday's cabinet press briefing. For the DBS News World, Miriam Montoud reporting. Meanwhile, St. Lucia is joining other nations in the region, becoming members of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our Americas, or ALBA Bank. It was one of the issues tabled at Tuesday's sitting of Parliament. Alba Bank is a regional bank with its headquarters in Caracas created in 2008 to channel money to development projects throughout the region. Again, Miriam Montout of the DBS News World tells us more. Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre returned from Caracas, Venezuela, where he attended the 23rd Summit of Heads of State and Government of the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of Our America People's Trade Treaty on April 24th. According to him, St. Lucia is now on the way to becoming a full member of ALBA. As you know, St. Lucia has joined ALBA, so we are going through the processes. And tomorrow, we're going to go into Parliament so she can become a full member of ALBA. ALBA is a bank that deals with developmental assistance to, to, to islands and in, in to, to, to countries. In fact, St. Vincent and Dominica are already members of ALBA, and I think Grenada also are members of ALBA. So St. Lucia is joining. There are some legislative things we have to do, which are going to do in Parliament tomorrow. 
According to the Office of the Prime Minister, the summit was significant as it provided an opportunity to reaffirm the commitment to unity and cooperation among sister nations. Further, the OPM says it is also an opportunity to develop strategies for addressing present and future challenges, with a focus on promoting sustainable and inclusive development. We have to deal with the share structure. It's like joining any banks. We, ALBA has its, has its, its rules and regulations. We have to deal with the, the share structure, etc. I can assure you it's strictly economic. It's economic. It's only dealing with economic development solution. Nothing to worry about. The Prime Minister returned to St. Lucia on the evening of Wednesday, 24th April, 2024. For the DBS News World, Miriam Montout reporting. In other news, ZNS's Romiko Knowles reports, Grand Bahama Ports Authority Chief Investment Officer comments on renewable energy deployment in the Bahamas. We have about, I'd say, close to 25, maybe 30 megawatts of solar power project, solar power projects coming on stream over the next two to three years. The opening of the Lucaya's solar project standing as a pivotal moment in Grand Bahama's quest for sustainable development. Not only does it signify a significant stride in the journey, but it also positions the Northern Island as the front runner in renewable energy within the nation. We know the Bahamas signed on to a pledge, um, a 30 for 30 or 30 by 30, meaning that we want to reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and improve our dependence on renewables at least to 30% by 2030. Now, Grand Bahama is indeed at the forefront of the renewable energy initiatives. Moreover, Derek Newbold, Chief Investment Officer of the Grand Bahama Port Authority, reveals that numerous solar projects are currently in progress. We have another three, four potential projects that we're working with right now. Um, a second one is already licensed. We expect construction to start later this year. A third is in the process of being licensed as we speak. Consumers are keen to understand how they'll reap the rewards of these solar endeavors. Newbold says the benefits would be tangible, ranging from potential reductions in energy costs to a more sustainable and eco-friendly power supply. For example, this particular plant is 5 megawatts. And so once this is connected to the main grid and is plugged in, the plan is to displace 5 megawatts of whatever your fuel charge would have been. So it creates a stabilization factor over a 25-year period. Um, And as you can imagine, the more we get plugged in, the more stable our fuel prices become over time. So that's the significance. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Ramiko Knowles. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. It has been nearly a year since the bombshell revelation by the Integrity Commission of Jamaica that six parliamentarians are under investigation for illicit enrichment. All this while, the nation remains on edge as their identities remain shrouded in secrecy. Well, one minister is of the view. It is time to name those involved. Natalia Clark of CVM Live provides some details. Despite mounting speculation, accusations and political uproar, there has been no update on the investigation into the six parliamentarians accused of illicit enrichment by the Integrity Commission. The matter which left a stagnant cloud of suspicion over the political directorate, was part of the IC's annual report last year. The public has since been clamoring for answers. Justice Minister Delroy Chuck says the silence surrounding the progress of these investigations is deafening. He's calling on the commission to provide closure. It is about time we have a report on the... The, the annual report of 22-23 about six illicit enrichment of members, whether or not those six members have been cleared, if one or all six have been cleared up, because when Mr. Craig Beresford was here, he intimated, he said that the basis of the illicit enrichment was a mismatch between purchases and income, or expenditure and income. To my mind, 
those members, whoever they are, if they can't clear it up, then we need some indication from the IC, Integrity Commission, what is being done. But the parliamentarians weren't the only ones caught in the crosshairs of the Integrity Commission's scrutiny. The report also found that 28 other public officials were under investigation for similar allegations. But what is illicit enrichment? According to the Corruption Prevention Act, it refers to owning more assets than your legal earnings can afford. Public servants can face prosecution if they fail to provide or if they provide an unsatisfactory explanation for their assets. The opposition PNP has denied any of its members being under investigation, while the government has largely stayed mum. Minister Chuck insists it's time the IC gets the ball rolling. Everybody asks me, I see on the street, are you one of the six? <laughs> it, it, it's not fair, Chairman. They need to tear this thing up. He was addressing the Integrity Commission Oversight Committee on Thursday. He also sought clarity on when the 2023-2024 IC annual report will be ready, to which Chairman Edmund Bartlett cautioned. I think it, it would be a little awkward. Um, in the normal run of things, um, the expectation of time would not have elapsed. So let's give the, uh, the commission, yes, yes, um, we have be between now to June for that report to my best uh, understanding. So um, I, I don't think that we should have the commission feeling rushed or pushed to have the annual report ready. Natalia Clark. CVM News. In the meantime, the World Bank foresees U.S. $550 million investments in Jamaica over the next four years. Javon Keys of TVJ Business Week reports. This is part of the new strategic partnership forge between the bank and Jamaica. Now, in a release, the bank says the new plan for 2024 to 2027 focuses on advancing green, resilient, and inclusive development. It will also support the government's efforts toward debt reduction and fiscal resilience. Emphasis is being placed on boosting human capital, creating higher quality jobs, and strengthening resilience to shocks. The plan should see the development of a comprehensive plan of technical and fiscal assistance, targeting improving access to quality secondary education, boosting social protection coverage, strengthening the business environment, and access to finance. The more than six-decade-old economic blockade on Cuba by the United States became a talking point for the Cuban ambassador to France at a recent forum. He was ambassador to France, Otto Valent. On Saturday, he announced the blockade that the United States has imposed on his country. Speaking at a round table, he said... Cuba has faced an economic, commercial, and financial blockade from Washington for more than 60 years, precisely for exercising that right to self-determination. Quote, it is not easy for a small country to build this path against a big empire, but we will continue to win. And of course, he learned at the event, which is being attended by guests from progressive organizations from Africa, Latin America, Asia, and Europe, who are meeting at the CPF headquarters. According to Villan, the triumph of the revolution on January 1st, 1959, was Cuba's opportunity to achieve and consolidate its full sovereignty and independence, a fact that the powerful U.S. neighbor cannot accept. They are conquests that we have to defend in more than six decades of constant aggression. With a blockade that affects the population and generates many difficulties, he explained. The ambassador asserted that despite so much U.S. hostility, Cuba remains firm in the construction of its own social project and maintain its commitment to international solidarity. At the opening of the peace conference, CPF International Relations Director Vincent Boulet repeated the organization's condemnation of the U.S. blockade against Cuba and its inclusion in Washington's unilateral state sponsors of terrorism, SSOT list. Poulet recalled that last year, the French communists launched a campaign to support Cuba in the light of the consequences of the blockade and its extraterritorial nature. <music> Thank you.
I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily regional news and more in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all perils, big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. We look after all our family. Yes, we do at every opportunity. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. 